Today's lesson is on tropical fish, and we're going to make a very large fish that fills our page. It kind of looks like a sunfish or a uh, kind of an angelfish shape, so you can make any type of fish that you'd like. It's kind of imaginary, a little cartoony, and I'm here with, uh, how many kids did I say I had? 23. 23. See, Miss Lucy can't remember after five seconds. 23. 23, lovely. What grade are you? First. First graders. And you are how old? Seven. Seven, six, eight. Is there any eight-year-olds? No. Okay, so we got some seven and six-year-olds, a bunch of smiling little faces. And we are going to make together uh, this crazy fish or this big giant fish, whatever you want to call them. And in the end, I'm going to take some of your examples and show all our YouTube friends what you did today. So let's begin. First, we want to think about our fish and our composition. And that's how you, where you're going to put your fish and how you're going to arrange your stuff. And what I want you to do is I want you to think about your tail and the end of your page because you want to make sure your tail uh, doesn't go off your page. And then we want to consider our face because of course if we draw the fish and there's no room for the lips well that's not very fun either so we want to make sure we have plenty of room for our fi fish lips and eyes and tail so we're going to plan artists plan first in their mind so visualize your giant fish on your paper and so we think about the top of the page the bottom of the page and in the very middle from top to bottom is our eyes. And our middle is going to be this line here, this midline. So let's find our midline. Top of the page, bottom of the page, midline. And then we're going to jump over toward our edge. But remember, we need to leave room. We need to leave room for the lips and the eyes. So take your hand like mine. Place it on the edge of your page. And we're going to put a number one. That tells us where our fish is going to end, our head. From there, we're going to jump over about three fingers. And I'm going to draw an oval. And you draw with me an oval. And I'm going to color that in. This is going to be the pupil. This is the pupil. So we draw the oval right here on our page. From there, let's draw a circle around that oval. Now, fish eyes kind of are, are very circular. They're pretty big. They're bulgy. Sometimes they're bulgy out the face. So we're going to go do a lot of layers just to give detail. So this is the fish's pupil, because all creatures have a pupil. That's the window to the world that they see out of. This is the fish's color. So this will eventually be, but don't color now, this will be the iris, you see? The color of the fish's eyeball. His iris. And then that's the white of the eyeball. So now we have our eyeball, and this is where our fish is going to end, his, his mouth. So what I want you to do is to do a horizontal line in. And then we're going to do a horizontal line back. Now, depending on the species of fish, some fish have little lips. Some fish have big mouths, like a big mouth bass. Angelfish really have tinier lips than this. But like I said, we're kind of doing an angelfish shape, sunfish shape, little fantasy fish here. And I drop down, and now I'm going to double line this. So this is a V, kind of like a sideways V. And this will be the fish's lips. Now I'm going to do some guidelines. I want my fish, I'm going to take this and go over, and then I'm going to go down. And then I'm going to be coming around to the other side. But remember, we need to leave room, plenty of room for a tail. So now on my back side, look what I'm going to do. And this was a diagonal up. 
diagonal down. Now, on the back side, I'm going to take my hand, and this is the edge of my paper here. See it? I'm putting my hand on the edge of the paper. And I'm going to go over, look, I'm going to give, my fingers are pretty big, so I'm going to live, give three fingers. If you want to do four, if you have a tinier hand. And I'm going to put a number one. Okay? This is where my tail will be to the edge of my page. And this is where my body's going to connect. So watch my lines first. And you do it slowly. Plan your line first in your mind. I can see it right now. I'm coming down, around, back up. Over and back around to give this cool fish shape. Go slow with these lines. If you go too fast, you're going you're gonna to overshoot this and maybe go to a different area. All right, here we go. Up, now I'm going diagonally up, and I'm going diagonally down. Diagonally up, diagonally down. And then I'm going to connect this with letter C's. Look, I'm putting a row of letter C's. A letter C, keep it in a nice row, and you're going to make giant letter C's. The bigger you make it, the less you have to do. So I'm putting a bunch of big letter C's straight down in a row. That forms the fish's tail here. The next step, I'm going to go diagonally up. One, two, three, four. If you want to do five, you can. You want to do just three, depends on, or you want to make a shorter one here. I can even make a real small one here. And then you're going to connect. Now leave them, look, they're about a finger space. They're not real skinny. Then connect with the letter U's. These are the upper fins. And I kind of slowly got smaller as I went back. If you ever catch a fish, these are the things that will stick up, and you've got to be careful about these. Same thing with the tail. These are the things that are real picky and can, and can poke you. And then we're going to do the same for the bottom. Put some bottom fins in. Rows of those. You can even get smaller. And then this is the opposite of the U, so I'm going up and down. Up, down. It's kind of like an N. I call it an N curve because it's up and back. Now, you can always fill these in after. You don't have to do it with me right now because you know the shape and how to do it. We can skip along then to the side fin here. We can draw number one, and then we can do the same for the side fin. Up diagonal, down diagonal. I just extended my line so they're the same length. And then I'm coming out, radiating out from this number one, and then I'm putting my C curves in just like I did my tail. Now we have pretty much the whole fish done. We've got an eyeball, some, some side fins, upper top fins, tail. You can even put the tail lines in here. And then add detail now. Look, you can do sections, section off his face. And then you can add, here's my, look, this is U-shape, U-shape scales or you could do v-shape scales that's up to you how you want to do this and you can do some or you can do in rows like I did if you're gonna do spotted fish you know you can even separate the fish here and do his tummy a different color and you can even do spots on his back if you want to here's like a spot that's up like a clownfish would have. So that's up to you how you want to decorate and design your fish. But you want to have unity. If you do scales, keep them all the scales. You don't want to mix like I just did, spots and scales. Um, unity would be all the same matching. But I do want you to do some really interesting background. And look what I did here. I thought about my color. And I did, um, I did if I'm doing warm colors for the fish, you're going to have cool colors in the background. And I didn't want to color my ocean, 
So I used the ocean color and I used it in my sea plants. And I put in some interesting sea plants and ground at the bottom. So if you want to put your ground, your sand, you give your sand line. And then your ocean plants come up. They go behind the fish. And this is called variation. If I have a tall one, then I need to have some small ones to make it more interesting. I can have some curving one way in the ocean current. I can have it curve here. So my height is different. That's called variation. And so I'm filling this with different heights of seagrass. And this is just one way to fill the space. It's better than having all this just colored in blue. And then I did some bubbles. And when the bubbles come out of the mouth, if you're going to draw bubbles, they go small first, bloop, bloop, and they get bigger as they go up. Bloop, bloop, bloop. So if you want to add some bubbles, you can. You can even add more grass that overlaps. Overlapping is interesting in your composition. It makes it a more advanced level composition. And by overlapping, I go behind, you see how I drew this? Behind this one. I didn't draw on top of it. I can even make a giant one coming up, behind, and this is curving. So variation in my lines. This curves to this direction. It connects through. It goes behind. And see how it's overlapping now and layering. So now I have him like in the, he's swimming through this grass. Now I'm going to come and look at some examples. If you want to draw the seashells, let me put this out here. So look at my rocks. You can fill this bottom with rock texture or sand texture. Just so you don't have it plain. Make it more interesting. Here's some seashells here in coral. And I'm going to look for some first grade examples, since I have my first graders here in front of me. And I'm going to show you what my first graders just made. And I'm going to take these, uh, let me see this one. I'm going to take this, these examples here. Wow, that's a ton of patterns here. Those are some, let me see those are some little patterns. And those say no fish. Oh my goodness, I can't even pick. You guys have so many really great ones. Oh, uh-oh. Well, I want to tell you, this fish examples, these are awesome fish. And let me show you what these kids made. Now look at this. This is what I like to see. Using your imagination. This is great. This is great for first graders. Look at this. This was one boy. And he even put in teeth. Look at that. So what I like to see is things I don't even show you as example and, and demonstrate. He used his imagination, stuck some teeth in there. Here's another one with teeth. And look at those cool patterns. He did some stripe patterning. Look at all of these scales. Wow, I'm really proud of you guys, you first graders. Here's a lot of seaweed in the background here. And then look at that. This looks great in this, um, it's kind of like a blue-violet marker. And then when you color them in, they're going to look awesome. So I want to thank my kids for helping me teach the YouTubers how to draw. And uh, let's wish the YouTubers good luck. Everybody, good luck and have fun. And thank you for my examples.